bull. Club call special. All the bull. All the bull. trip with a newspaper spread before us opened up to the March of Events and City Life section, a section that appears in Hearst newspapers from coast to coast. Columns full of fun and frivolity by the country's leading humorists. Will Rogers, O.O. O. McIntyre, Arthur Bugs Bear, Milt Gross, Sam Hellman, just to name a few. And also in the City Life section are the latest and smartest cartoons, drawn as exclusively for Hearst papers. Never a dull moment, a laugh in every square inch. <laughs> this for a starter. Now here's a picture showing an upper hall in an apartment house. A very small boy is about to ring the bell. Hello. Well, what do you want? <laughs> I'm the little boy that lives downstairs. Can I come in? Why, I guess so. Come in. Gee, it ain't in your living room. Can I look in your bedroom? Well, what are you looking for, young man? Oh, just Something my mother told me about. Gosh, it ain't your bedroom either. What? Can I look in the kitchen? Well, if you'll tell me what you're looking for, what? maybe I can... What, doggone it? It's not even in the kitchen. Oh. Ooh, ooh, maybe it's in this closet. What are you looking for, anyhow? I'll have to ask you to tell me now. Gee whiz, I don't see how it could hide in a small place like this. Young man, you listen to me. What is it you expect to find here? You must tell me or I'll have to send you home. Ah, oh, oh, you wouldn't do that with your lady. Not till I get a good look at the elephant. My elephant? Well, I, I have no elephant. Just what do you mean? Well, we live right downstairs, and, and my mother says there's some elephant that walks around up here. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, Club Call Special. Next stop, Arthur Bug Bow. All aboard! <laughs> Today is a big day in Rough Town, that hard-boiled hamlet created by Bugs Bear. It seems that the local champion named What a Man is defending his title against Toodles Bowser, who is also supposed to pack a wicked wallop. The stadium is crowded to capacity. The fans are wild with excitement. The noise that you hear is just a few of the girls cracking black walnuts with their teeth. <laughs> Now you'll see something. Yeah, look at Toodles, boy. He's plenty tough. Ah, he can't smack hard enough to get a rumble from a drop. Wait till you see what a man land on. Uh, <laughs> that what a man so muscle bound he couldn't even throw his mother a kid. Oh, look at What did I tell you? Right on the button. Ah, oh, that champ didn't even feel that yeah, one. Yeah, says you. Boy, this guy Toodles is so tough. He gets rope points every morning just from tying his own neck tie. Oh, look at that one. What a man is down. He ain't down. He's just fixing his shoelace. He's out. He's out. Total twins. Total twins. Ah, this is a sissy fight. Who called for the gloves, anyhow? What a man ain't used to fighting with gloves. That sissy manager of Total's asked for the gloves. He was afraid Total's might get hoided. Yeah, that's what you think. 
He wasn't afraid Toodles would get hoit. No. No, he just made Toodles wear the gloves so he couldn't pick the referee's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. Club call special. Next stop, O.O. McIntyre. All aboard. <laughs> One of the most popular radio features of the past few years were the hillbillies, those quaint songsters and instrumentalists of the southern mountains. But not all of these hinterland folks, however, have braved the rigors of the broadcasting studio. Lots of them still remain in their isolated haunts, unaware of modern progress. O.O. McIntyre's feature in the Hearst Papers recently carried an account of what happened when a couple of northern motorists encountered a couple of real, honest-to-goodness mountain folk. <laughs> Some country around here. Hmm? Looks like 40 miles from nowhere. And we haven't passed anyone for miles. There's something coming up, though, the road now. Yeah, oh, a horse and buggy. Well, if you ask me, it's the old gray mare and the one horse shay. Yes, I'll give them plenty of room. They might be moonshiners. It seems to be a man and an old woman. Holy smokes, look at that horse. Why, he's scared. Oh, there, turn your fool. The old woman's jumping out. Just look at her run. Straight through those bushes, too. Oh, the horse must be a bad actor. I'll stop the car. <laughs> that, fa that fellow can hardly hold him. You never saw an auto before, I guess. Whoa. I'd better help. Oh, please be careful. Hey, fella. Uh, let me give you a hand. Well, don't need no hand, mister. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Was that your mother jumped out of the buggy a minute ago? Yeah, more's a might fidget chair on the road. Well, here. Say, now, let me help. I'll hold your horse's bridle and lead him past my car. Well, don't bother about the horse, mister. You just get to hold him on and lead her past. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. Club call special. Next stop, Will Rogers. All aboard. <laughs> Rogers likes to talk about the early days in the movies when any picture was a success so long as it was about cowboys and desperadoes and beautiful heroines. Will tells a story about an ambitious actor applying for a job. The conversation ran something like this. So you want to be an actor, huh? Yes, if you don't mind. Say, why should I mind? Uh, uh, what kind of acting have you got, for instance? Well, I'm pretty good at cowboy stuff. Hmm. So you think you're a cowboy, huh? Can you throw out the lasui? A what? You know, the lariat, uh, uh, I don't get you. You know, that piece of rope. Oh, no, no. I never did any roping. Hmm. Maybe you can roll a cigarette with one hand behind you, huh? No, I can't even do that with two hands. <laughs> Such a bum cowboy. Uh, listen, uh, maybe tricks on the horses that you do, huh? Oh, no, no. I was never on a horse in my life. Say, what is this, a joke or something? I'm making pictures of a rancher whose beautiful daughter gets kidnapped, and then all the cowboys there are riding on their horses to save her. And you was never on a horse in your life. Well, I could play the part of the rancher. I could do that. So how could you play the part of a rancher when you can't even see that on a horse? Well, that's easy. All he has to do is stand on the porch and point where the kidnappers win. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. Club call special. Next stop, Milk Grove. All aboard. <laughs> Milk 
Gross has had one of the most rapid rises in popularity of any humorist in recent years. His character, Joe Runt, is gaining an ever-increasing following in Hearst newspapers throughout the country. Today we find Joe in a particularly happy mood because he's getting a ride home in the boss's car. And on the way, the boss is giving Joe a bit of friendly advice. There's nothing like a little consideration to keep a wife happy. I guess you're right, Mr. Thorndike. My wife is never so happy as when she is considering something to throw at me. <laughs> well, I guess you haven't been taking my advice lately. Oh, yes, I have. Remember what you told me one day about planning little surprises for my wife? So you remember that, did you? Uh, what pleasant little surprises have you planned? Well, uh, I'm working on one now. I sent her picture to the magazine. Sent a picture to the magazine. Uh, what's that all about? Well, this magazine is running a contest. Hmm, what kind of a contest? It's called a, a Why I Love My Wife contest. Well, how does it work, Joe? Well, you, you send your wife's picture in, and you also write a little essay on why you love her. And the best picture and the best essay wins a prize. That sounds fine. Yes, sir. She doesn't know anything about it, though. I, I'm planning it as a big surprise. Uh, when will the winners be announced? They ought to be published today. I'm hoping the magazine is home already, and my, maybe my wife has seen it, and maybe she'll be in good humor. Well, here's your house, Joe. Thanks for the ride, Mr. Thorndike. Not at all. Good luck. Goodbye. Oh, it's you, is it? Good evening, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Say, did that magazine we subscribed to come today? Well, it certainly did. Did you happen to look at it? I certainly did. Did you see anything in it that made you feel uh, kind of happy? Yeah. I saw something in it all right, all right. Was it you who sent them my picture? Gosh, was it really in? Did you win the prize? Did I win the prize? You bet I won the prize. Anthony, did you send them my picture? Yeah, I did. I thought it would make you kind of happy to win the Why I Love My Wife contest. You did, did you? Well, the contest I won was the Funny Face Contest. Funny Face Contest? Yeah, a Funny Face Contest. And the prize I won was a waffle iron. I wondered what you were doing carrying that waffle iron around. Well, you needn't wonder anymore. Hey, don't! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Club Car Special comes to another stop. You have been listening to Fun and Nonsense by the foremost writers of humor. But you can continue the program, if you wish, right in your own home by securing a copy of the Hearst Sunday newspaper and by reading the March of Events and City Life section. There you will find long articles by such famous authors as Will Rogers, O.O. McIntyre, Bugs Bear, Milt Gross, Sam Hellman, and others. No other newspaper has such an imposing array of names so prominently identified with the comedy world. Look and laugh at the comical cartoons also. The Club Car Special is scheduled to arrive at your home next week at the same time over the same station. Don't be late for this comedy train. You are assured of another 15 minutes of fun and nonsense.